All right, welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have Samuel starts to make annual deposits with an initial deposit one year from today of $7. He increases the amount of each subsequent payment by $7 until he reaches his final payment of $77. What is the future value of Samuel's payments if the account he makes the deposits in pays an annual effective interest rate of 5%? All right, so in this scenario, we are looking for a future value, right? That's what our problem tells us. And we're looking at a series of payments that forms an arithmetic progression because each payment, each subsequent payment is increasing by a set amount of $7, right? This is different than a geometric annuity where the payments increase by a particular percent or a particular rate. The payments in this annuity are increasing by $7 every time. It's not changing, it's always seven. All right, so we know we're looking for the future value. We know that we're looking at an arithmetic increasing annuity, right? Because he's increasing his payments by $7. And now we just need to know, are we looking at an annuity immediate or an annuity due? And remember, an annuity due is where the annuity starts today, or the first payment is made today, and an annuity immediate is where it starts one year from today. And so if we look at our problem here, it says Samuel starts to make annual deposits with an initial deposit one year from today. So it's not starting today, it's starting one year from today. So we're working with an annuity immediate that has an arithmetic increasing progression. All right, so that's a lot to keep track of but that's the type of annuity we are working with in this problem. All right, so we know we're looking for a future value and the notation for the future value of an arithmetic increasing annuity is the following. We'll have that this is equal to capital I and then S and then we'll have N bracket I, right? And so this notation represents an arithmetic increasing annuity where each payment is increasing by $1. And so what you have to keep in mind is that if you're going to use this formula, but your payments are increasing by more than $1, right? In this case, they're increasing by $7. You need to multiply that amount by this notation or by that formula, right? So in front of this, we're gonna have seven. And so then in order to use this formula, we also need to know N, the number of payments in the annuity. And we also need to know I, the interest rate for the scenario. And so the interest rate is fairly easy to find. The problem says that the account has an annual effective interest rate of 5%. So we know that I is equal to 0.05, which is 5% in decimal form. But what about N? What will N be equal to? How many payments is Samuel making in this scenario? Well, he's starting with an initial payment of $7, right? That's his first payment. But then every payment is increasing by $7 until he reaches his final payment of $77. All right, so if the first payment is $7, that means that the second payment would be $14, right? Because we're adding seven to that previous payment of seven. And that would mean that our third payment would be 21 if we add another $7. And you can continue that on until we get to the last payment where the amount is 77. And so what do we notice about what is happening between the number of the payment and the amount of that payment? Well, our first payment was $7, our second payment was $14. It just looks like we have a pattern of multiplying whatever number our payment is by seven, right? If we multiply one by seven, we get seven. If we multiply two by seven, we get 14. Three times seven is 21 and so on. And so we just have to ask ourselves, well, what is 77 divided by seven? What number times seven gets you 77? Well, that would be 11, right? So we have 11 total payments. 11 times seven is 77, all right? And so then we can write that the number of payments n is equal to 11. And so if you didn't follow this way of figuring out how many payments we had, you could also do the brute force method. You could just write out all the payments and count them, right? You could go seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, and so on until you got the 77. And you could count how many of those you had. It wouldn't take too long but I just did it the way that made the most sense to me. So this is just part of the problem where you gotta use your intuition a little bit on how to figure out what that value of N is. All right, and so then if we clean that up, we can write out what this formula would be equal to, right? So first we'll have that this is equal to seven times that notation, I, S, where N is 11, the number of payments is 11, and then our interest rate is 0 0.05. And so then what is the formula for this notation? Well, if we write it out, we'll have that this is equal to seven times S double dot N bracket I minus N divided by I, right? That's what this notation is equal to. This is the formula 
for the future value of an arithmetic increasing annuity, right? And then this part of that formula is the future value of an annuity due. That's what this notation is right here. And we also have a formula for that, which I'll quickly remind you of what that is. S double dot N bracket I is equal to one plus I to the power of N minus one divided by one minus the present value factor. But if we plug in our values of I and N into this formula, we'll have that this is equal to seven times S double dot 11 bracket 0 0.05 minus 11, and then we will divide that by I or 0 0.05. All right, and so then if we rewrite this with what it is equal to, right, if we rewrite this notation to be this formula with our values of N and I plugged in, we'll have that this is equal to seven times 1.05 to the power of 11 minus one divided by one minus V minus 11 divided by 0 0.05, right? And so then this seven's a little off-centered, so let me just rewrite that here. We'll have seven times this whole expression. All right, and so then one more thing I wanna do before we calculate this and plug it into our calculator, I'm going to rewrite this present value factor to be what it is equal to. And so that would just be one divided by one plus the interest rate, which in this case would just be one divided by 1.05. And so we'll have one divided by 1.05. Okay, and so then if we go ahead and plug all of this into our calculator, we will find that this is equal to $548.40. And that would be the future value of the arithmetic increasing annuity in this scenario. That is the future value of Samuel's account. All right, and so now maybe you notice that this was a bit of a complicated expression to type into your calculator. If you have a calculator with a computer algebra system or a CAS, then this probably isn't too bad. You could probably do it in a few seconds. But if you're using any other type of calculator, such as a financial calculator, this is going to be a lot harder to do without making a mistake. And so what I would suggest is that you break this calculation up into smaller separate calculations and then combine them as you go along, right? So maybe I would calculate this first and then subtract 11 and then divide by 0 0.05 and then multiply by seven, right? Kind of do it in parts. That way you're less likely to make a mistake. However, there is an easier method of how you would calculate this using a financial calculator, but I'm going to leave that for a future video where I completely focus on how to use a financial calculator in various scenarios throughout this course. And so you can look forward to that in the future, but for now, just know that the best way to go about this calculation is to break it up into little pieces and combine them as you go along. All right, and so with that, let's look at our next example. All right, so for this example, we have that an annuity immediate has a first payment of $200 and increases by $100 each year until it reaches $600, after which the payments stop. If the annual effective interest rate is 4%, find the present value of the annuity. All right, and so in this scenario, we are looking for a present value, and so we need to ask ourselves, what type of annuity do we have? We're told that the annuity is an annuity immediate, Right, so that's good. We know that it's not an annuity due. And we also know that the payments are increasing by $100 each year until it reaches a certain amount. Right, so that means we have an arithmetic increasing annuity because the payments are increasing by a set amount of $100. They are not increasing by a percent or a rate. They are increasing by an amount that is not going to change. It is $100 every time they increase. However, notice something that is a little bit different about this problem compared to our previous problem. In this instance, our first payment is of an amount that is different than the amount that our payments are going to increase by, right? In our previous example, Samuel made an initial deposit of $7, and then every payment after that increased by $7. And so the value of his initial payment matched what the rest of his payments would increase by. That is not the case in this problem, right? Our first payment is $200, and then the rest of our payments increase by $100. So this is a little bit different. We're going to have to calculate this in a different manner than we did in our previous example. It's not going to be as simple as saying the present value is equal to 100 times the notation for the present value of an arithmetic increasing annuity, right? This is not going to be the correct answer to this problem. We are going to have to account for these $200 somehow. And so let's back it up here and let's look at a timeline of what is happening in this scenario. 
So here's what's happening in this problem. We want to know the present value at time equals zero, where our first payment is going to be made at the end of that first payment period, or at t equals one, and that first payment is $200, but then every payment afterwards increases by $100. So our payment at year two is 300, our payment at year three is 400, and then at year four it's 500, and at year five it is 600, right? And remember that the payments stop when they reach $600, and so that's why the timeline ends right there we are told that they increase each year until it reaches $600, after which the payments stop. And so how are we going to calculate the present value of these payments using the formula for an arithmetic increasing annuity? Well, we're gonna have to break it up into two separate annuities. And so let me show you what I mean. Think of this series of payments as two separate series of payments, right? We're gonna have one series where we're going to continually make $200 each year. Right, think of it like this. We have $200 that we're going to pay at least every year. And then for the second series of payments, we would be paying $100 starting in year two, and then that would continue to increase by $100, so then we'd be paying 200, and then 300, and then 400. Right, notice that each of these amounts are going to add up to the top here, to their total, right? We have 200 and 200, and then we have 200 plus 100 is 300, and then 200 and 200 is 400 and so on, right? We have two separate series of payments here. We have one series of a constant $200 being made every year from t equals one to t equals five, and then we have a separate series of payments that starts with 100 and increases by 100 each period. Notice that this matches up nicely with our formula for an arithmetic increasing annuity, right? We like to use that formula when we start a series of payments with a certain amount and then increase by that same amount, right? We're starting with $100 and then we are increasing by $100 with each payment. That's different than what is happening up here where we started with 200 and we're increasing by 100 each time. This does not match up with our formula, but this does. And so what we can do is calculate each of these series of payments separately we're going to have one series where we're just gonna be calculating the present value of an annuity where each payment is $200, and then we're going to calculate a second annuity that is an arithmetic increasing annuity that starts with 100 and increases by 100 each period. And so here's what we'll have. We'll have that the present value is equal to this stream of payments, right? That's gonna be 200 times the notation for the present value of a regular annuity immediate. So we're just gonna have A, N, bracket, I, and then we're going to have plus 100 times the notation for the present value of an arithmetic increasing annuity. So we'll have capital I A N bracket I, right? And so then let's quickly figure out what N and I will be in each of these scenarios. We know that the interest rate is going to be the same across the board, right? Each of these series of payments is going to have the same interest rate. They are being made into the same account. And so let's find it in our problem here. We have that the annual effective interest rate is 4%. So we know that I is equal to 0.04. And so we can plug that in for each of these I's here. We'll have 0.04 in this spot and in this spot. And so I'll just write that in real quick, 0.04, okay? And then what about N? How many of each of these payments are we going to be making? Well, for this first set of 200 payments, they are starting at T equals one and they're continuing to t equals five, and we have five of those payments. And so in this case, n will be equal to five. So I'll write five. But it's going to be a little bit different for our second series of payments, right? These arithmetically increasing payments, because we only have four of them. And so n will be equal to four. So I'll write four. But now we're actually not done yet. We still have something we need to account for in this problem. Right, remember that the present value is valued at time equals zero, right? That is the valuation date for a present value. And so for this first series of payments, we don't need to make any adjustments because the first payment starts at time equals one, which is what the present value of an annuity immediate assumes when we calculate it, right? This notation assumes that we are starting at time equals one and we wanna know the valuation at time equals zero. And so this is good, we don't need to adjust it. But how about this series of payments that starts at time equals two? This formula for an arithmetic increasing annuity also assumes for an annuity immediate that these payments are beginning at time equals one, right? One period after time equals zero. But look at our timeline here. This payment is starting at time equals two. And so there's a problem there. This is not going to get the correct answer for the present value of these payments. 
So what we're going to have to do is bring these payments back one year, right? This formula is going to calculate the present value of these payments one period before that first payment is made. So that means it would be evaluating them at time equals one. And so we need to bring that valuation back one year or one period so that it is valued at the correct date. And so all we have to do to do that is multiply it by the present value factor to the power of one, right? If we take this present value, which is valued at time equals one, and we bring it back one year by multiplying it by this present value factor, then everything in this calculation is being valued at time equals zero, and we will have the correct present value. Okay, so this was a little complicated, but hopefully the timeline was helpful in seeing why we needed to set up our equation like we did right here. Okay, and so with that, I'm going to remove this timeline and clean up my work a little bit here so that we can go ahead and calculate this present value. All right, and so then the first thing we wanna do is rewrite each of these formulas to be what they are equal to. And so just for reference, we know that a n bracket i is equal to one minus v to the power of n divided by i, right? That's going to apply to this part of our calculation. And then for this part of our calculation, we know that capital I A N bracket I is equal to A double dot N bracket I minus N times V to the power of N divided by I. And so then remember that this part of the formula is the calculation for the present value of an annuity due. And so I'll just write that down as well. We know that A double dot N angle I is equal to one minus V to the power of N divided by one minus V. All right, so now that we have all these formulas here for us to reference, let's go ahead and calculate this present value. Okay, so this will be equal to 200 times one minus V to the power of five divided by 0 0.04 plus 100 times A double dot four bracket 0 0.04 minus four times V to the power of four divided by I, and then that's gonna be multiplied by the present value factor to the power of one. And we'll write that out in our next step. All right, and so now in our next step, I'm going to write out what this would be equal to using this formula. And I'm also going to just rewrite these present value factors to be what they are equal to, right? One divided by one plus I to the power of N. And so if we do that, we will have that this is equal to 200 times one minus one divided by 1.04 to the fifth power, and that will still be divided by 0 0.04 plus 100 times one minus one divided by 1.04 to the power of four divided by one minus one divided by 1.04 minus four times one divided by 1.04 to the power of four divided by i, and that is still multiplied by this present value factor, which I'm gonna to try to squeeze in here, of one divided by 1.04. And so I know this is a lot to look at, it's very complicated, and so if you need a second to pause the video and digest all of these formulas, you can go ahead and do so, but if you were to plug this first calculation in your calculator, you would have that this is equal to 890.36447 and some more decimals, plus all of this plugged into your calculator, that would be equal to 855.46699. And so if we add these two values together, we would find that this is equal to $1,745.83. That is the present value of the annuity immediate in this scenario, where the payments start with 200 and increase by 100 every year thereafter, until it reaches 600. All right, and so once again, just remember that if you're going to plug all this in your calculator to break it up into different calculations, because this can get very difficult very fast if you try to plug all of it in at once. And so with that, this was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.